Hey guys, this is Nick. Today I'm working on my 1994 Mustang GT. When I bought the vehicle, it had the radiator fan hooked up to a switch under the dash. I wanted it to be back to factory and use the original system. However, after going through everything, I've gotten to the point where I believe that the CCRM is to blame for the issues that I'm having, and I don't wanna to have to spend a couple hundred dollars to replace it, only to find out that it's probably not even the problem. So I'm gonna hook it back up to a switch, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently because I want this to be something that's not gonna wear out the fan too quickly or something you forget about and have the car overheat. So we're hooking it up to a thermostatic switch that I bought for $19 from a advanced auto parts. So the first thing is the actual thermostatic switch. How this works is this goes into your radiator hose and it detects the temperature and this works as your switch to turn on and off the radiator fan as necessary. Or you could always go very basic and just use a typical switch from any auto parts store to be able to work. However, I wanted this so you don't have to think about it. The next thing that you need is a relay. And the most important part about the relay is that you need to make sure that the amperage it's rated for is the amperage of the fuse in your fuse box for your radiator fan or whatever application you're using it for. If you don't really understand what a relay is, I didn't either when I first started messing with them. I didn't understand the purpose of them because why don't you just hook up a switch to it? What's, what's the point of adding the relay? What I've realized about the relay is that your switch that you would normally use, like let's say I could just hook up power ground, put the switch in the middle of it and my radiator fan is done. The reason you don't wanna do that is because this switch can't sustain that high of a current for extended periods of times. It will not be reliable. So what the relay does is you hook up all the thick gauge wire to your power ground to your radiator fan there because that can handle the amperage that it's rated for. And then you use the switch on a very low voltage circuit to be able to open and break it. So literally all that this relay does is gives you a place to hook up power ground to the electric fan and then you use your switch to turn it on and off. In this case, the switch that we will be using is this thermostatic fan controller. Next thing that you're gonna need is some fusible links. You can buy these from auto parts stores or online or something. This just gives you a place to be able to hook up a fuse into. You do not want to hook any of this stuff up without a fuse because if something starts melting or catching on fire, it's not going to stop. Then we just need our basic electronic stuff. So I have some 10 gauge wire here on a roll. This is wire that came with a kit. Right here I have a bin full of different electrical connections some conduit so that we can wrap it up nicely and hide everything. Then we just have your typical hand tools for crimping and stripping wires. We have a heat gun because I'm gonna be using some heat shrink and a drill as well in order to drill some holes to be able to mount this stuff to real nice and easy. A lot of the stuff I'm using you don't have to use but I'm gonna to try to do a very factory-like install so it's necessary. When picking out your wire, you need to look at a diagram online that tells you what gauge wire is gonna support what. Understand that the longer distance of wire that you need to run, the more resistance it's gonna create, the hotter it's gonna get. And if you were to use, let's say, like 20 gauge wire to try to power these fans, that wire would get so hot that it'll literally melt in half eventually and obviously your fan won't work anymore and that's a fire hazard. So you wanna make sure you're using the correct gauge wire for the correct distance that you're running. It's really easy to figure out. I'll put a graph up right here. And for my purposes, 10 gauge wire is gonna be perfect. I already have a roll of it. I bought this 100 foot roll for like $30 from O'Reilly, so it's not too expensive and it'll last me for forever. Something I'm probably not gonna be using today is a soldering gun. If you have a soldering gun and you want to use it, you definitely can. I have some bud connectors that I absolutely love. They have heat shrink on and they do a phenomenal job. I'm just going to stick with those to make this simple and easy. One thing that's important to understand is what your factory's fan circuit system does and does not do. It does turn the fan on whenever you turn the AC on. This is not going to have that unless we were to install what's called a trinary switch. It's very easy to install if you understand how to install all of this stuff. You're going to be able to figure that out. However, for my purposes, it's just not necessary, so I'm not going to spend any time or effort on that. There's also two speed settings on my radiator fan. There's low and then there's high. 
probably the easiest way to maintain your low and high speed settings is to just do two sensors, two relays on totally different things so that you have both settings. However, for my purposes, just sticking with a low speed setting will be more than enough. If I decide that that needs to change, I'll do another video in the future showing you how to hook up that second relay as well. Another thing your radiator fan does is it turns off when you turn the car off. If you hook up the switch's power to the battery, it will not turn off. It'll turn off whenever your car comes down from whatever temperature you set it to. In order to make your radiator fan turn off when your car turns off, you need to hook up the power to this to a keyed 12 volt ignition source, which means you turn the key on and then it gets electricity. That way you're not gonna drain your battery. The first step in what I'm about to do is to remove the plug for the radiator fan as I'm gonna reuse this plug to make the new connections work. So I'm gonna pull it off I'm going to cut the wires and then we'll hook it up to the relay and the switch. In order to make this clean, I'm going to cut the wires right here where it splits and then I'm going to electrical tape up all the conduits to here so that you have a nice watertight connection that looks like factory. Here's a pigtail. You want to make sure that these connections in here are not going to be able to touch each other or otherwise it could short out. However, what we're going to do is remove the fuse from the factory fuse box for the radiator fan so that we never have to worry about electricity flowing through these again. All right, so let's connect this back up. So here's a new home of the thermostatic switch and the relay. They're both closed, easy to work on, easy to access, easy to run the wires to and from where I need to go. I made sure that this was the correct length to be able to make it kind of hidden up under through there and into this upper radiator hose. I could have gone in through the bottom to make it a little bit cleaner of an install. However, I would have had to dump all the radiator fluid out when I take that hose off, so this will be a little bit better. And so now the next step is let's get all the wires starting to run to where they need to go. So first thing we're gonna do is run the power wire from our battery to the relay. Make sure that you cut too much. You do not wanna have too little. That will make everything very complicated. If you don't have a nice connection that makes it easy to add on like this, you can always loosen these screws and you can shove it underneath here to get the power that you need. The next thing we need to run is a switched power wire for the thermostatic fan. Switched meaning it only gets power when the key is on so we're not going to drain the battery when the car is turned off by leaving the fan on. So sadly I'm about to have to undo my beautiful electrical job because I believe that this is a switched power source right here and this would be a super clean way of being able to get that 12 volt signal that I need. So let's get to it. So how I'm testing this right here is I have a little splice and I'm just gonna hook it up. I got another wire into it and I'll read what it says. So I got my multimeter hooked up on DCV20 and when I hook this up, I should read nothing. So I need a ground somewhere. All right, so we definitely have good contact. Try a different grounding spot. Definitely have no electricity on. So let me go turn the key on and see what happens. All right, key is on and we got 12 volts. That's it. So here's the pigtail for the factory fan connection and I'm going to run this 12 volt switch wire in the same loom that's going to go from my relay to the fan. So I'm going to go ahead and put these connections on now so that I can run it all at the same time. Got the harness all finished up. I took these ends, connected each side to the battery positive and negative to make sure the fan was working on the low speed mode. You also want to make sure the fan is pulling air and not pushing air because if it is doing the opposite then that means that you have the polarities reversed. So you want to make sure you have that right. I also hooked this up to make sure I was getting a key 12 volt signal still and it was so that's good. So now we're going to start wiring up the relay. The first and the easiest part is I'm going to ground it. And luckily these screws right here, I know Ford always uses these green screws on ground. I don't know if this actually has to ground here, but either way, I'm just gonna clean up the paint on one of these connections and I'm gonna use it as my ground. So we just cut off ignition, the fan just shut off. We have all the wiring all finished up. I got this stuff all ran up underneath here. Got the line 
going into the got the probe going into the upper radiator hose right here you can see I got the line as high up as possible tighten this until it wasn't letting any air out or leaking you can squeeze the hose to give that a test you see we're good nothing's coming out there so all this is ran up under here this is our relay that we have mounted up this is the thermostatic switch these are the two grounds for the relay one for the radiator fan and the last step now after tweaking it to make sure that it's working coming on at the correct temperatures is to put the radiator cover on my radiator cover is broken it's missing this piece that is right here it would hide this a hundred percent if it was I'm probably gonna find that piece but as you can see we got everything hidden up there it's all nice and tidy cleaned away it's away from heat if anything there's going to be fresh air coming in to help keep those relays cool those can definitely get hot when they're putting a lot of electrical current through them this is where our fuse is ran our fuse 12 volt switch for the relay last thing i got to do is put some electrical tape over this connection down here because it's exposed and that's it